Hey, happy summer, y'all. It's Blake Stanberry here again with another teaching in our summer series. It comes from our Inner Healing Ministries, and today's teaching comes from a true counselor. It's Susan Marks. You're going to be able to tell that she's very gifted in this area. Her teaching is on basic trust. You're going to want to really listen closely. It's fantastic, and she's got a flip chart. I love flip charts. Enjoy. Hi, I'm here to talk about basic trust. Basic trust is very important. It actually shapes the rest of our lives. It's either developed or not developed during the first mental year of life. Mental year of life means that's the time it takes a child to develop a developmental task or some kind of uh, development. Um, It's a stage of life that we go through. During the first mental year of life, our primary task is to learn basic trust. Luke 6.45 says, A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good. An evil man, out of the treasure of his heart, brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When we talk about basic trust, we are talking about the condition of our heart. So that's what I want to teach you about today. First of all, let's start with a definition. Basic trust is several things. It is the capacity to hold the heart open, open to life and open to others, especially when we don't believe those others have our best interest at heart. Basic trust is security. Basic trust is the knowledge that I am loved just because I exist, not because I do anything to earn it, but just because I exist. And basic courage is, basic trust is the courage to be, to unfold, and to risk life. Basic trust is vulnerability. To be wounded and yet to be able to stay in there, to hold on, to press through. And basic trust is the ability to bounce back when we've been hurt. It is the fundamental building block of all relationships. Basic trust is not learned by instinct has to be built into us. Every person has needed needed healing at some time or another, either as a child, from a childhood wound, or even as an adult, when something traumatic or wounding happens to us. We live in an imperfect world. There are many wounded hearts and souls searching for healing. True healing comes from God. One of the ways it comes is what we're going to learn about today, basic trust. Scripture says that the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings and come to restore all things and to bring healing to wounded hearts. What creates basic trust? It's created primarily by warm, affectionate touch. And let me add the word appropriate warm, affectionate touch, because these days affectionate touch can be distorted in many ways. Without basic trust, our brains are not fully developed. They're not developed in a healthy way anyway. If you don't get basic trust in the first mental year of life, you cannot advance to the other stages of life. Now, where does this affection affection need to come from? Primarily from the father figure. Do you know that it's been found that some forms of mental retardation occur if a young child is not touched and loved and cuddled the way it needs to be. As a child, even if you had a lack of material things, but you had warm, affectionate touch, love, and acceptance, you can still develop basic trust. The warm, affectionate touch must be, of course, from mothers and fathers, but primarily from fathers. Listen to these scriptures. Ephesians 6, 4 says, Fathers, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. The NIV version says, Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Malachi 4, 5 and 6 says, Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. Sounds pretty important, doesn't it? That we need to have basic trust. We need to, fathers need to instill this in their children from a very young age. Some people say that even before birth, 
that child can know whether it's loved and accepted and wanted and secure and safe. And I believe that's true. So what happens if we don't have basic trust? How are we going to restore it? If you come to me and you're wanting to know more about basic trust, I'm going to ask you some, uh, some questions. It takes a lot of time. It takes prayer. It takes forgiveness, both forgiveness for the one who hurt you and forgiveness of yourself for the grudge you may have held against that person. It's going to take belief by the counselor that this actually can be accomplished. And it's going to take love and affection. You see, when you come for basic trust, you come directly to God. He heals it. He creates it. He gives the touch, the love, the forgiveness. He's the one that helps you to avoid confusion as you seek this process. One of the greatest things you do when you come for basic trust is you repent. You say, Father, forgive me for the grudge I've held. Forgive me for holding um, bad thoughts about this person or this situation. So if you come to me, I'm going to ask you questions about your father. I'm going to say, what was your father like? Did your father give you affection? And you may not remember that, but you've probably seen pictures of yourself when you were a baby or you've heard family talk. Did your father touch you? Did he feed you? Did he diaper you? Did he uh, rock you? Did he sing to you? Did he read you stories at night? Did he tussle on the floor with you? How did he discipline you? That's very important. How did he discipline you? Was it harsh or was it loving? Was it with strength and courage or was it with uh, uh, punishment or vindictiveness in mind? Also, it's good to know that basic trust can be gotten from someone other than the biological father. It can be a stepfather. It could be a grandfather. It could be an uncle. It could be a godfather. It could be anyone who's been uh, influential in your life in a positive way. Um, there is, basic trust is, is the difference between building your life on a firm ground and building your life on shaky ground. We all know what happens if you build your house on shaky ground. It's not going to be secure. It's not going to be safe. And anything you try to build on it is not going to last. It's the same way with basic trust. If you have basic trust, your life will be built on a solid ground. It will have a firm foundation. Now, in order to find out what kind of foundation you have, I would ask you questions like, i would be looking at your roots. Again, asking about your family heritage, your father's heritage particularly. I would be looking for the treasures of your heart. I would be asking you questions that will reveal the treasures of your heart. And I would be looking at your foundation, which is basically the first six years of your life. That's when most of our, our lives are formed during those first six years. Um, I'm going to show you a diagram here that I think is very important. <clears throat> Between the ages of zero and two, and again, some people say it's from the womb to two, this is the time of, this is the first mental year of life. And the involvement of your father is very important here because it's going to determine whether you grow up on the basic trust track or whether you grow up on the performance track. What's the difference? Well, on the basic trust track, if you mess up, you're, you don't consider yourself to be a mess up. If you fail at something, you don't consider yourself to be a failure. If you make a mistake, you don't consider your li whole life to be a mistake. And you might have guilt over something, but you don't have shame. The difference here is guilt is I did something wrong. Shame is I am something wrong. So. If you grow up on the basic trust track, you have this kind of security. It's called unconditional love of the Father, the Father God. And you know that if you've had unconditional love of your earthly father or a father figure on this earth. Performance orientation, just the opposite. If you mess up, you feel like you are a mess up. If you fail, you feel like you are a failure. If you make a mistake, you feel like your whole life is a mistake. And again... You might feel some guilt, but you feel a lot of shame. Shame is I am something wrong. So it's very important you can see the difference in these two lives. And Jesus Christ is the answer to getting from here back over to here, if you're already past that two-year mark or that first mental year of life mark. God wants you back over here, and he does that through building character in you. 
I want to read some scriptures to you here. Romans 5 says, Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And here's the character part. 2 Peter 1, <clears throat> add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. So remember, basic trust is developed first mental year of life very early, primarily by the father figure, and each stage, if you don't get basic trust, you can't move on to the other stages, which would be individuation and individualism. You can't move on unless you get the first step, which is basic trust. Uh, first two years of life, especially the second year of life, is known as the terrible twos. Why do we call it that? It's because a child learns that very famous and powerful word, no. <laughs> and that's when they practice the no word. And we think of it as being the terrible twos. It's not terrible at all. It's a child trying to test this. It's a child trying to say, if I mess up, if I fail, if I make a mistake, are you still going to love me? And that's what they're really wanting to know. So it's very important with your children to let them know, yes, they're loved, even if they mess up. That's unconditional love. If you get that, then you can move on to independence and individuation. Uh, Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. He has made everything beautiful in its time. I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken away from it. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that you may be filled with the fullness of God forever and ever. Do you want this forever and ever? I think we all do. If I'm your counselor and you come into my office, I'm going to ask you some questions, pretty hard questions. I'm going to say, you know, not only what was your father like, but can you forgive your father? Can you forgive this person who has harmed you? If it was a, a, an uncle or a, a total stranger who wounded you as a child, can you forgive them? Can you forgive yourself? Would you forgive yourself for holding a grudge against this person? And then as the counselor, if they do that, I'm going to say, I affirm you in that. I affirm you that you forgave these people that have harmed you, you have forgiven yourself, and you've gone before God, and you're asking Him to hold you and to, to accept you as you are. And if you go through this, then I'm going to say to you, you have, come, you have taken a great step. You have walked into the first step of basic trust. Remember, this is God's destiny for us, is to walk in basic trust. Remember that we are unique, we are loved. We don't all develop at the same ta at the same time at the, on the same schedule. It's really important not to expect the same thing from everybody at the same way. We do have basic trust forever and ever if we go to the Father to get our unconditional love. Are you looking for that today? If so, I'd like to have a prayer with you. I'd like for you to go with me to the Lord, and we'll go through these steps that I talked about. Let's pray. Father God, we do come to you today. I bring my hurt to you. I bring that wound to you, that wound that I know is there that's never been healed. I lay it at your feet, Lord Jesus. And the person that caused that wound, I forgive. I forgive from my heart. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me because I've held a grudge against this person. I have let it weigh on my mind and I have let it destroy much of my joy. So Father, I ask you right now to hear my prayer, to forgive me and to restore me into your full grace. Lord Jesus, I know you do. I know you love me. I know you love me not based on what I've done or what has been done to me. You love me because you created me. 
You've given me a destiny. And Lord, I want to walk in that right now. I want to walk in your forgiveness. I want to walk in your love. I want to feel the fullness of your love. Jesus, I celebrate that today, that I'm no longer going to walk based on shame. I'm going to walk based on your love. You created it. You gave it to me, and I receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching this teaching. I um, know that it's of value to you, but also think about who else it might impact. Um, it's very important for you to, to um, let this sit on your spirit and reflect on this teaching, but also think of somebody else that this might help. Think about the entire summer series that we've offered to you. I hope it's been of value to you. If you want to revisit it or find other resources about Inner Healing Ministries, you can go to journeytowholeness.tv. There you'll find this video, other videos, and other resources. Hey, it's been an honor to produce this from New Covenant Church. I hope it's been a blessing. Hope you've had a great summer. And uh, don't forget to connect with us on our social media. God bless.